All right. Here we are at Midwest Cam again. And uh, this one has also been done to death. But um, I'm starting off here. Um, this is the piperine uh, extraction from black pepper. So white pepper obviously is going to be a better option. But with black pepper, it is suggested to use potassium hydroxide to saponify. Um, sort of like make soap out of some of that fats and resins so it'll come out of solution. Now, once it's out of solution, it could be filtered and the dissolved piperin um, can be filtered off. Then it can be brought out of solution. Um, I would think letting it set to evaporate for however long um, without being heated would probably be the best way to go. You'll get bigger crystals, more pure crystals, yada yada. But you can heat dissolve everything and cool down by, or uh, crush out the crystals by cooling it down from a super saturated state. Um, so as you can see, it doesn't really move super fast. Kind of does. But not as fast as if it was just water or alcohol. Um, there's a lot of oil it was dissolved. And so there's a lot of oil mixed in with it right now. I'm not really sure if you can, yeah, you can kind of see it. But uh, a lot of these dark spots underneath you can see are crops of piperin crystals. Um, I could filter off and try this, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to re-dissolve it, add the potassium hydroxide, and then add a little bit of water to crash the crystals out. Um, once the crystals are out, I will then recrystallize them in ethanol. Uh, so... Basically what I did was I took a jar and some peppercorns, black peppercorns, and I crushed them up a little bit. It was extremely time consuming, so after a while I just gave up. Um, I filled up the jar. I used about 400 grams of peppercorns, I believe. It was about a pound. So I used about a pound of peppercorns in there and let it soak. Um, one to two times a day I would come around, shake it, mash it up, try to get everything out, and uh, all that good stuff. I used actually just Everclear, 95% uh, where I'm from. So, that probably gave me a little bit of a lower yield, but I used like, I, I used almost the whole uh, fifth of Everclear. So it was total overkill, but whatever. So here we are, got probably the max extraction I can get for what I got. And it's evaporated all the way down to almost nothing. This is to show what would happen if you didn't do the potassium hydroxide. So all these oils and stuff could have been filtered off as, as kind of a soap. Um, you know, it'd be a, a salt form of a, a fatty acid. So they could have been filtered off and water could have been added to crush out the uh, piperin. So this is what we're going to do, but I wanted to show the beginning of this. This is actually where I started. All it was was a soak with some shaking. There wasn't really anything to show. I didn't use a gram condenser or anything. I kind of wanted to show how to do this more uh, just sitting, soaking, see what the difference would be see what the percent yield would be but its total soak time was about one week so and then it was vacuum filtered off all right our next part of the piperin process is uh, we're gonna take an alcoholic potassium hydroxide solution here I've basically just copied Kim player on what he uses or they use, whatever, but it's uh, 40 milliliters of uh, absolute ethanol with 6 grams of potassium hydroxide in it. Now, it takes forever for this shit to dissolve in there. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down to about 100 milliliters, and uh, if it starts to produce crystals before that, I'll, I'll take it out. But I'm going to switch it over into this beaker, and then once that's there, I'm going to put that in there, mix it with that, and it's going to saponify some of the uh, 
the resins and the fats and whatnot and uh, turn them into kind of like a thick soap. Now, for my first procedure doing this, I actually discovered something on accident. And uh, over here, here we go, fibrin. So you can actually see a little fuzz ball in the back there, and this is actually not 0 0.9 grams. I weighed that with all this, not realizing that that little puff ball in the back is actually part of my filter that I have scraped off. So the rest of that is fairly pure piperin. I'm going to assume about a half of a gram. So there's a very minor pepper smell. Um, I do believe this is really pure, possibly without recrystallization. So my error, what I did, I mixed up my water and my potassium hydroxide solutions. So what I did do was add a bunch of water to that solution and crashed out all the oils and uh, the piperin together. So once I fixed that and got everything back down to, to dryness, I was able to, or not dryness, um, I filtered it and collected the piperin crystals with all the oils and fats and then put it into a new beaker and dissolved it with ethanol. Now, what I discovered was these fatty resins and, and stuff from the soaps are actually pretty soluble in ethanol. I just kind of went on assumption that when I tried to dissolve the piperin out of solution that the fats and stuff would be left behind even though I was using ethanol. I was sadly mistaken. I don't know if you'd say sadly, but I was mistaken. Uh, the soaps uh, and resins, whatever, they all dissolved really quickly. So I was able to dissolve all the oils, all the resins, and leave behind some piperin. Now, obviously, some was dissolved, but and I don't know how much. Uh, I'm assuming a vast majority of my product, but I got frustrated, and yeah, bad stuff happened. So anyways, got about a half a gram, 400 grams of pepper. So I am restarting this to do it the right way, and I will be only leaving my potassium hydroxide solution for it and waiting on the water. So we'll see how this goes. Um, hopefully it'll all go quickly, easily, real smooth. You can actually see some of the oils coming out. All right, so we finally got it filtered, or not filtered down, evaporated down. And I started seeing what I thought might be crystals, so I figured, why not? We'll get the next step started. Black pepper extract and ethanol, and then six grams of potassium hydroxide and ethanol. I'm just gonna add this up. A lot of stuff. Like starts to come out. Okay. We'll let that stir for about five minutes and I'll get the filter set up. And all the little soaps and shit that are made out of this reaction will be pulled out. One thing about this uh, extraction more of an extraction than a synthesis, um, is that it's a little, it's weird. Um, so you dissolve everything, you know, you heat your alcohol. The thing is, if you're using anything less than absolute ethanol or a absolute isopropanol, uh, you're going to be having to use a lot more. Uh, I use 91%. And I used about 750 milliliters to try and get, um, in total, between two uh, boil downs, uh, trying to get all the piper in out. Um, here we go with what we have now. Basically, since ethanol is precious and 91% isopropanol is a dollar, I went ahead and uh, bought 
some isopropanol and I dissolved everything and I let it evaporate down to dryness where I could redo the solvent as uh, ethanol. So I used absolute ethanol. I have some absolute right here. It's a little cloudy, some sieve dust there for my project. All right. Fucking hate sieve dust. Anyways, um, I tried vacuum and filtered it out, but eh, it's easier than distilling. And a lot of the things I filter go through a coffee filter and not the vacuum filter. So that being said, if it can pass the vacuum filter, uh, center paper, uh, then it can definitely go through a coffee filter and it won't be a problem. So, uh, this is, uh, what you have after you've reacted it with, um, potassium hydroxide. You take your ethanol and potassium hydroxide solution. You dump it in. I do mine kind of warm. That way a lot of the crystals are dissolved. You can go down a little farther and then I add it. Um, the addition of the potassium hydroxide will make sure everything kind of stays dissolved as long as you're, you've worked the solubility out with the addition of your ethanolic potassium hydroxide solution. So I had about three grams that wouldn't dissolve. So I added about 50 mils of alcohol with six grams of potassium hydroxide. I did not scale up the potassium hydroxide from Ken Players. He only used about 100 grams, and I believe this time I used about 370 grams. So a lot more uh, fats are going to get left behind, which it's okay. I mean, I took out quite a bit of, of a product, but just for comparison, this is my... Um, pipe rinse solution, uh, post uh, crashing out of solution, and then recrisp. And this is the final product, pipe rinse, about 5.9 there. This is the stage where we're going to add water to crash everything out of solution. This is definitely my least favorite part. The particles get so small that they can't hardly make it through the you know, they clog the filter. It's difficult. It takes a couple hours, so. We'll, uh, get that going now, I suppose. We're getting somewhere with this one, as you can see. Clouds of pippering. I love it. It's gorgeous.
this is Piperin. It's um, made from black pepper. Uh, this one's still not completely pure. It's been crushed out from solution with water and then captured and recrystallized. And this is the end product. This one, again, just like the other one, after the potassium hydroxide was added, it was crashed out. And this one was collected but not recrystallized. Uh, it looks much more pure. Um, during the crystallization where I threw it in uh, the fridge and let it sit overnight after crashing it out, it actually formed like bigger crystals. Whereas this one formed more of just a fine precipitate. So the white pepper is going to be the way to go. This took me about 15 minutes to filter after crashing out. This took me two hours. Big difference. I believe a lot of oils in this were clogging the filter. Um, I added like, I took a beaker, 10 mils of water, put it in the microwave so it was boiling. And then that little bit of hot water I dumped in and it suctioned everything through. Once again, I could filter good. So I, I assumed it was probably just oil and clogged the filter in the hot water, like thinned it out so it could go through. Uh, this is the N2 products. Um, I added a little bit of this to this so I could do the piperinic acid. Got about 14 grams here. And I've got about 6 grams here of the white pepper piperin. And that one's going to be used for a special complex.